Decorating Pages podcast presents production design film study. This class examines Oscar-nominated films spanning a century of cinema. Accomplished professionals in production design will explore and dissect the sets featured in these nominated films and will educate why they were recognized for the design of their time. This class features the films of 1955, and this year will be reviewed by Kim Wanup, set decorator, and Stephen Olson, production designer. I got I I have I had no idea this movie ever existed. <laughs> so. I didn't either. My wife knows it. I said, "Oh, Daddy Longlegs, never heard of that." She goes, "Are you kidding? Fred Astaire, Leslie Caron? Oh, it's great." I'm like, uh, "Yeah, it uh, watches a lot of Turner." It was classic movies. So I I love uh, Turner uh, TCM. I'm I'm yeah. always watching stuff on there, but I missed. I've never got into this one, and I watched this last. I think this was the last thing I watched too. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen a Fred Astaire movie all the way through. I know I've seen bits and pieces, but I I will admit that. But um, production design designer Lyle R Wheeler and John DeCure and set decorators Walter M Scott and Paul S Fox. The uh, snippet for this is a wealthy American has a chance encounter with a joyful young French woman and anonymously pays for her education. She writes letters to her mysterious benefactor, nicknaming him from the description given by some of her fellow orphans. Um, Just for me, the, the movie is great for like half of it and then it lost me. (laughs) <laughs> story oh. wise story wise set story wise, wise yeah set wise everything is a jewel everything is fantastic in this in my opinion um this office he like his office is in a museum that he owns so he's like you know he's so rich totally mid-century he likes to play the drums um look at that like fireplace just like even though it's you know on the brown and darker tones it's still bright they have obviously have to design for him to be able to do dance dances in the middle of his room so that's always a part of their their design in this but the the wood is fascinating to me and it could look the guy sitting down there goes into the other office it's you know but weirdly you really don't see the museum that it's connected to till the end uh, you get little glimpses of yeah. you get little glimpses and then like finally at the end they show like a wide it's crazy more of his office um that great the <laughs> panels in the back like i guess showing that he has some art back there um but yeah fun so he he's going to france for something the car breaks down he goes oh let me go over to this farmhouse over here which is a mansion and um ask and see if they have a car for us well, before that look at this guy's lamp i love this guy's <laughs> desk lamp is fantastic yeah that is that's my favorite thing in the whole movie <laughs> and then you see the outside i think i double played this picture but um you see a little bit of the museum here but so it, they go to this mansion oh, wow. <laughs> and it's an orphanage and they have all the fabric that they're making the kids clothes out and around and sewing materials. This huge Columns made out of clay, it looks like. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah. The, the, so hooky, yeah. The backyard is like so ridiculous. But look at the like the the work of the railings and all. It's a yeah. giant tree back there that this she, is the backyard of the man of <laughs> yeah of the, of the wow. orphanage. And she's feeding them. She's teaching them songs. And he sees her through the window and he's like, oh, this is fascinating. He wants to adopt her. Now, I looked up in real life. He's 55. I don't know what age they're trying to make him in the movie, but she's 18. She's 18. Yeah. The the story starts to break a little for me there. So he, he goes to his french diplomat friend he's like look i want to adopt her and they're like whoa whoa whoa, buddy you can't adopt her you can you can benefactor her you can't adopt her so all right fine it'll be anonymous she'll never know who i am it's fine but look at this this scene they're in this office for a minute (laughs) 
it had to be what studio was this paramount did you say this is um just, oh i have my um i said lyle wheeler uh was the production designer um is he where's lyle wheeler because he was the studio head details 20th century fox oh well, it's fox i'm just thinking that it, it had to have been a set that was left over from some Probably. you know historical drama that they had done and they uh, did it up there's no way that they would build this whole thing for one look scene. at that rug look at that rug <laughs> it's gigantic oh the studio system yeah they went over to the they went over the prop house got all out look at that, that mantle we're still renting that mantle <laughs> somewhere <laughs> um they show a little bit of her in the orphanage putting the kids to sleep before she finds out well this is she finds out she's gonna leave then she's all mm -hmm. happy laying in bed but look how gorgeous that shot is of her yeah it's, it's i mean and the doily up there like the little things that they have um her little light and little vase so they go to the she goes to the best designed um <laughs> sorority house i've ever seen um, I think it's a college in Boston supposed to be. And so he flies her over to New York. She shows up first day. Look at this. It's the railing up top, the staircase. Love it. Yeah. Gigantic. They don't even do any dancing. And well, they kind of do a dance, but not really. Like it's huge. It's huge. It's perfectly white. You know, it's impressive. And then I I mean, for the scene and everything, she needed to be impressed, like, you know, small fish, big pond. Her dorm room is fantastic. <laughs> um, Again. Yeah. They give her the pink room. That pink room in the back becomes her little corner, her little bedroom. And um, he sends trunks full of clothes because really she just comes with that tiny suitcase in the bottom. And then he sends her all these clothes. Like it's a fantastic girl scene of like, oh my God, look at all these dresses you got. And so it's sweet. It's still sweet here. It's still right. sweet. Then, so she's writing letters for like four years. She's writing letters. He never writes back. The secretary gets all the letters. His his lawyer says, don't answer him. Don't answer him. He doesn't need to be bothered with this. He forgets, I guess, that he's sponsoring her. Because his only stipulation of, I'm going to give you this. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But I want you to, I want you to tell me how you're doing. So... He asked for correspondence, but then never checked up on it. That's how aloof this billionaire is. So one, so the the roommate of the French girl is Fred Astaire's niece. Like he, oh. he gives to this college or whatever. And it just so happens his niece is her roommate. Well, mm -hmm. he goes to a dance to finally like check up on her. He starts dancing with her. Fantastic dance. You know, look at the, and then the set of this, like the ABC and then the screen panels and just the color that they gave off of these walls and the the shadows that it created, I thought were great. And it's so simple, but it's so impactful of like, you know, school dance. Mm. Um, so that's Fred Astaire's sister-in-law. This is one shot, one telephone call they gave her it doesn't even look like they gave her walls it looks like fabric behind her Great fabric <laughs> a dresser side table yeah chair. this is like insert shot hurry up you got like half a day go dress it um but but he at this point i don't think he had even told her that he's the benefactor he brings the french girl to new york the top scene is them dancing in her hotel room <laughs> gigantic sets i would say yeah. but you know you're doing all these dancing. things yeah you gotta dance so these were wonderful these are fantastic so here it takes a turn she falls in love with him she met him one day right she kind of figures out well she falls in love with him so then she starts having these dream sequences about um, him dream ballets and dream so, that, <laughs> so these are all her dreams and this color and these, the lights and the, the everything is so imaginative. I just adored it. Like you were watching a play all of a sudden yep. and it, it's, what is it? It's in CinemaScope, right? Or yeah, it's in CinemaScope. 
everything is shot wide and yeah. beautiful fantastic and like you were saying before like the force perspective like even the chairs are like the legs are too long on one side and yeah everything's a little t tweaked torqued yeah, yeah. dream um, dreamscape this ballet thing where they just they hung the dresses with that fabric hanging in the back and he's up in this you know crazy almost seuss like um balcony, balcony. Yeah, watching balcony. her yeah look at that that was all great the colors are great then he shows up on this street and they go shopping in these windows dancing together um and this i think the top mm -hmm. is my favorite her like the door she was the ballerina scene and she's going into another scene and she just walks all she does is like you know ballet walk to that doorway and then there's this mime scene where she's dancing and as she's dancing the fans come on and that rio disappears blow it gets blown away yeah, yeah wow. it's fantastic it is this the dream sequence for this is fantastic and then that she goes, oh, I now you get to meet your benefactor, and she and then she she realizes, oh, the man I met is my benefactor. So there's his office, and then this is the museum. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's big. A museum museum. with an Austrian drape in it. I uh, yeah. It's like. Oh, yeah. So, I am very I'm very glad I watched this. I think that this has made an impression on me like visually definitely the weirdo story of like the old man still you know creeping on this little french girl is weird to me but whatever i i like pretty woman too so whatever <laughs> um wow fantastic yeah i really i really enjoyed watching it and i i think that's also fun too because i knew nothing about it and you just happen upon this gem. So I really, I liked it. I would definitely say that this is uh, something to watch, to be inspired for. Cool. Yeah. Guys and dolls. Guys and dolls. Does that live up to the hype? <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, it's it's clearly one of the the big um, music movie musicals um, yeah. uh, coming off of Broadway. Um, I... I'm a little, I feel connected to this in a way, two ways. Mm -hmm. um, Oliver Smith was my design teacher. Wow. That is awesome. Um, he would have been close to 70, late 60s, I think, uh, when he was, when he was teaching. And, um, you know, I went to, I was in grad school in the 80s. Um, and he talked about his work um, in film, which was, pretty limited i think he's got he production design on uh um bandwagon the musical numbers and he did this which he did not do you know he was a guy who did dozens and dozens and dozens of broadway shows he was the broadway designer he had i think done probably already um at least uh 20 um 20 musicals on broadway by the time he was asked to do this um, in 1954 or whatever. But what he told us when we were in design in design school and we were studying, you know, he, he was teaching theatrical design and he would say, I know a lot of you guys want to go into the film. And, 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 and if you do that, because I have one piece of advice, take the money and run. <laughs> Those he goes, it's just a ruthless business. The designer has no control. Um, and and he, yet here you are, Steve. He, hate, he <laughs> hated it. He absolutely hated the film business. Um, and there's a, another theatrical production designer will come up in a minute on Picnic, um, who was a, 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 you know, a colleague of wow. in the same year. But um, so Oliver hated um he hated this process mm -hmm. it's interesting though that he didn't do he didn't he didn't do guys and dolls but he was asked to do the movie of it and mill zener who did picnic did guys and dolls but was not asked to do it or he was asked and he didn't because he hated it too so we'll get to that later but um 
uh yeah let's so so let's look at some of these you know i found another sketch a uh, picture that i didn't send you because i just found it last night and it was actually um oliver's little sketch rendering of the um, the mission scene and now have you seen this movie no I have, okay so you know it's um uh nathan detroit is uh runs a crap game frank sinatra nathan detroit he runs a crap game and there's a big gambler in town and he wants to um uh you know play craps but the the heat is on the cops are watching them they won't let him uh you know they he knows that these guys all play craps and it's illegal and so they're they're shutting them down everywhere mm. uh and um so he's trying to find a place to play for this hold a crap game he's told his girlfriend adelaide that he's not going to do that anymore that he's going to go straight but he's you know he's a he's a bum this is all based on the damon runyon stories and they all talk funny and they have funny names so there's like harry the horse you know there's like all right. everybody's a weird name and they have they use weird lingo slang um and so that's all the way through you know so it's all very stylized it's very non-realistic um the broadway show is very non-realistic so you see it like this is what I was going to point out. If you if you go back to the, the the picture right before, so that's the backdrop. That's Times Square. It's a painted backdrop with all these neon lights attached to it, right? Um, and it's very um, stylized and unrealistic, right? But we have all these cars, which are very realistic, driving through massive, massive um, set built on a on a stage. Um, you know, with all these cars driving and people in Times Square. And then they would go into buildings on this on this built thing, and they would shoot inside of the mission or the Lindy's restaurant or um, the barber shop. So it's just kind of weird because it's there's parts of this that are trying to look realistic, but then you right. see in the, look in the this he's walking out of the mission at 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 night, and that backdrop doesn't have its lights on. Right, it looks terrible. It looks like work light. Well, yeah, you know, the funny thing was when you sent me the pictures and you said, oh, I want to show some things that don't work. And I was like, yeah. oh, and then I looked at these pictures I was like, oh, it, because I think sometimes when you watch movies, you're like, oh, that's supposed to be so intentional. Maybe I don't get it. But this backdrop <laughs> stops in the middle like it's black. It's it's because. <laughs> So Until here's the thing. I, 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 I will I will say that I'm I'm positive that Oliver Smith had already left. He had already gone. Right. He, he I mean he probably showed up. He he designed did a bunch of sketches. He had a um Joseph Wright, who is the art director on credit, had done a ton of movies. Um and um, you know, he had done Oklahoma, Porgy and Bess, um, Flower Drum Song. He knew what he was doing. But Oliver was trying to bring this Broadway theatrical feeling to it. I think it doesn't work. I think the theatrical backdrop thing doesn't work. And I think what happened here, this is when he said the production designer has no control because the cinematographer is going to light right. it however he wants. Do whatever they want. And yeah. that's what happened here in this image is like, you know, first of all, it's the city that never sleeps. The lights never go out right. on, on Times Square. But, you know, Hollywood cinematographers have this thing. If it's a night, if it's a day scene and you're outside, you cannot have a light on. You you can't, you know, because it because if the lights are on, it means it's night. <laughs> That's like this this rule. And so he comes out of the, you know, 2 a.m. or whatever time it is. He leaves the mission and they don't Even have the street lights are off. It, it just looks bad. Well, and there's a wet down. What are you wetting the street down for? There's yeah, and then there's some left. some taxi drivers just hanging out, and it's wet. I I don't understand. So that's what doesn't work. Because then you know, in this, the whole movie starts out with this very long dance sequence, which is fantastic. Choreography is brilliant. You mm -hmm. know, and it's this great storytelling. You you know you follow these people. So flip to the next picture. Well, this is in the mission. This is. I mean, this is looks like. This is Times Square. I'll go back to the Times Square. Yeah, so there you can see it's you've got a realistic sort of drugstore or whatever. There's a little newsstand, which is kind of hokey. 
Yeah. Um, there's a subway where they're coming out of. I mean, it's kind of a mix of, and now here's that backdrop again. We're in the middle of Times Square, which is, this is but all theatrically done. You, you still see the bottom of it. You see the bottom of it because it's supposed to be a backdrop. It's supposed to be in the background and they, they're shooting like right in front of it. You can see the wrinkles. It's, it's hokey. But it, even in this top picture, you can see on one side, there's a very kind of realistically done drugstore. Right. And then the other side, there's a backdrop, which is clearly like uh, theatrical and they, yeah, they don't, course. they don't meet. It doesn't, that it's, it doesn't work. And I don't think, I mean, I think this is what Oliver was said, like, they're going to do whatever they want. They're going to shoot like in the th in theater, you have control over it, you know, you because yeah. you're you're giving the audience is sitting in one place and your set is on is on the other side and you're controlling how we look at the set and the backdrop can work from one perspective, maybe, and will look like it's going off into the distance. It'll look fabulous. And it's part of a theatrical world. When you do a backdrop like that, on a show and you shoot it from the side and you show that where it, you've got a black ground row hiding mm -hmm. the bottom where the light it's yeah. just wrong it's just oh, he would yeah. he was he probably never. rolling over it just he was uh, he was cringing when he saw this i'm sure he'd never anyway. he so would never you know, that's how it's supposed to be seen in that right. top that's how it's supposed to be seen and um with bustling crowds and people and it's in it's that's the the choice angle that you want to see this backdrop and it's how it works and these are lit differently like one's darker one and they it looks fine like i know it's a little hokey or whatever but it's like and one's night one's day yeah. yeah sort of but it's you know they wanted the theatrical look and they got it but then it wasn't necessarily always shot right that way it wasn't shot they, you know, the the DP decided he would shoot it however he wanted to shoot it. So the flip back to that. Um, uh, go back there one more. Where was that um, mission scene? There yeah. it is. So they go into the mission, and you know, this was I did find there was a sketch um, on a website of Oliver's sketch for this mission scene for this movie, and it was it, this. Now to be fair, it was very pale and um and sort of colorless um but you know he's a theatrical designer and he designs sort of when we do theater shows and you design the look you know right. the the view from the audience of the set and the set doesn't have four walls right because it's right. in theater so we're looking now at at him and it looks like he's against a fourth wall it looks like it's a wall that was just thrown in. Right. Pipe down the center to hide the seam. Pipe down the, to hide the seam. And it just looks under, compared to everything that we just looked at in, in those black and white movies with, you know, this just looks yeah, like it wasn't, like that's not, that is not a look that he would have wanted. It's not an angle, you know, I don't know. I think that he was there was they were they were um there was a quote from Cedric Gibbons who ran the MGM art department and he said there was a um a, a New York theatrical designer had done us had done some sketches for a show. He said, "Well, um how, how how do you want me to to film this? How do how, how am I supposed to shoot this?" And the the designer's response was, "Well, that's your business." Oh, no. you, you figure out how to do that um and you know i'm not going to tell you how to do that and you know i think you know his his feeling was they're going to shoot it however they want it i don't have control over it i hate it so um there was it didn't it, uh, very often didn't work out with the broadway people coming over to, yeah yeah to work in film they weren't welcomed they were told you have to, you know, you can't draw anything. You have to join the union. You know, mm. we'll get to that on picnic a little bit. Um, let's look at some more pictures. But even look at this, like they have the full curtains. They're not. You can't even shoot through them. And then they put <laughs> the defix on the on the glass on the door yeah. and hide things so you couldn't see out either. Like they're trying to hide something. They knew to hide well, something. I think that mission, that curtain look was 
it was part of the original Happy. look of the mission on Broadway, the Broadway show. So it was kind of the characteristic and it was also um, in his sketch. Mm. Um, and then, oh, another reason, you know, I'm, I said there was a couple of reasons why I'm close to this production. The other reason is um, I was the associate designer on the Broadway revival with Nathan Lane and Peter Gallagher oh, back in wow. two. So I I lived through the uh, a whole Broadway staging of this. Did you watch uh, this for reference? I didn't, I had never seen it. And I, I didn't see it until much later. Um, we researched the original production, Broadway production, Joe Mills Zener production, and the and Tony Walton was the designer, and it was um, it was sort of a Valentine to the way Broadway musicals it used to be very backdrops, mm -hmm. a heavy scrims, translucent backdrops, dye painted drops, you know, um, wonderfully lit and super brilliant colors. Mm -hmm. Lots and very theatrical. Not nothing was you know realistically um, created. There was no straight lines. It was very whimsical and mm. and you know bold colors. And so um, I that was my um, sort of life uh, with Guys and Dolls, and it went on for quite a while because it was a, at least a year, more than a year, working on that and like the touring productions and everything. So yeah. it was, I kind of lived and breathed it for a year and then I saw this movie and I was like what the f so it well was... it's a good thing maybe you didn't research this movie uh yeah yeah I mean I you know I was the associate designer so I was really you know work, taking the the sketches from the production designer and turning it into you know create you know I was the art director right so, um so but we did go to the to the Lincoln Center Library where they have um all the Millziner sketches and we researched all of that um for for this so let's go this was this was the opening part of the opening number which is a very stylized choreography and it was really wonderful it's the, very theatrical i don't think it necessarily works with this kind of real back it's just me it's just me and my theater i i kind of feel like the realistic backdrop you know, you know movie theater a department store it's just it's just odd anyway well, it just is kind of like look we're two-dimensional over here but we're three-dimensional over here like why don't yeah. we just be the this same this is thing? wonderful this looks very much you know the whole there's this whole opening number and it kind of all segues into these three guys around the newsstand reading their racing forms and they start singing um uh the fugue for tin horse the tin horns i got a horse right here and it's wonderful and you see the brick wall and it's kind of red and you know it's 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 nice but then there's a there's another shot this is all part of the opening number it 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 works in a way that all works it's really the choreography is great um i know the bummer is i don't have these in i don't know the order of this movie. order this barbershop kind of bummed me out because it was just bland uh, it's just kind of grayish you know and then all the all the barbers are in white, and then all the people getting there, you know, just, yeah. I just and this there's a little bit more color here, but it it um. This is where Nathan Detroit, where Adelaide meets up with him, and he's he's trying to he's trying to get Marlon Brando, Sky Masterson, um, he's trying to bet him, uh, something stupid, to to try to win a thousand bucks in a bet with him because he knows that that sky masterson will bet on anything mm. and he's loaded but, yeah um and then this is he this is that uh, where um adelaide works she works at the at the hot box and it's um a nightclub and she does the um you know they have the then and it was a new number that they wrote for this movie mm. uh and that was it's one of your your pictures that you have the the little the cats the cats on the on the uh, on the they're they're it's like a, a cat scene and yeah. it's it's called like pet me pretty or something i don't know it's <laughs> uh yeah there's the barbershop and then down below is oh, oh, there there's oh. the picture of the cats oh there's the cat oh that uh, that's what you meant yeah yeah the cats and the rooftop and and um those are the back those are the backup uh singers and dancers not adelaide but it's this is fun so here's the thing the musical numbers in this i think work really well there's 
There's this one. There's the. Um, Can I uh, have something? Wait. No, that's like well, up in the the upper scene, the upper picture. That's uh, Havana. Mm. Um, Sky takes takes um, the gal from the mission. Uh, the bet the bet that that Nathan gets him to do is uh, he goes. I bet that you cannot take um, any gal. Uh, with you to Havana, I name the gal, and I, you won't be able to take her. And he convinces this the Salvation Army um, gal to go down to Havana with him for dinner because he's rich. So he's going to fly down to Havana, have dinner, and then fly her back. Does and they, Marlon Brando sing in this? You could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> you could call it that. It was. It, it, um, they say that that um, Astaire. They, they were feuding through the whole thing. Because Astaire wanted the Marlon Brando role, but Brando was a bigger star. And so what they say is Brando is such a good actor that you think they make he makes you think he's singing well. <laughs> and and Astaire called him mumbles. Well, eventually. Called him mumbles, yeah. But um uh the scene in Havana is great because he gets her drunk, she orders milk, and he orders her a uh, Dolce de leche, which is milk with rum in it. And he gets the, the girl drunk. And they there's a big dancing number. And it's really wonderful. So those those scenes kind of really work. There's rich color and it yeah. all is cohesive. And there's the dance number was fantastic. Texture on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. texture and everything. Down below in the nightclub, that really worked. I love uh, that tufted blue wall. Tufted blue is, yeah. It, was a surprise to me, but it's wonderful. Let's see what's next. And that's that's, that's Lindy. Back to the not don't like. <laughs> I don't just didn't like it. It just yeah. it just there's something really like Pepto Bismoly about it. It just was yeah. like not not my color um preference. And I just I just it to me I don't yeah. I, I didn't get it. But you know it's a, supposed to be a Times Square um little diner. Yeah. And so the upper thing, that's Adelaide in her dressing room. And I'm trying to remember why Sky is in her dressing room. I don't remember that. Why don't I remember that? Well, he's, he's meeting up with um with with Nathan and the, oh, and she realizes you're you're back into the into gambling. Oh, okay. Down below is the sewer scene. Uh yeah, they, that looks fun. It's fantastic. So yeah. it's fantastic. I mean, the the set that they do is it's a huge version of sort of the Broadway set. Um, way way bigger. It's you know probably more dancers in this, and just it it was vast. This is Sky showing up. The, the only place they can get to play this crap game is in the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they go down a, a a manhole cover. They lift up a there's like a construction <laughs> thing, and they go. He's like, "Where's the crap game?" And he goes right here and they climb down into the sewer and there all the guys are there waiting for um sky to show up and um uh, and it's and a, a good time for nathan because um the big gambler from out of town who's sort of in the middle on the yellow has just um told um nathan that he's gonna he's gonna roll with his own dice and he's gonna roll it directly against nathan nathan's the house so on every uh uh role he gets a chunk of it so he's the only guy who's been making ton of money right and the big guy from out of town is out of cash but he's going to play on a marker and he's gonna he's got his own dice and the dots have been removed but don't worry i remember where they were right <laughs> and so of course he wins every hand every role and he he takes all of uh nathan's money and then sky shows up and then there's the big uh the big dance number with sky and um okay so this this is a great these two pictures together so this is the upper picture you see the salvation army band is playing on the street and they're trying to you know they're trying to find sinners and get people to donate and whatever and and so you know, there's a, a lot of the cars you know to create this and the color of the cars is is great too it's great it's all wonderful and the backdrop and they, they've got some construction which there's always construction in new york I don't think it's particularly a good thing to have on a set. It doesn't really look like never anything. Reads right. it it never reads like right. Never reads right. the ladder. I Even if you painted red, it still doesn't look. You know, yeah. it might look real, but it doesn't 
Anyway, the problem is it's that whole fourth wall flipping and you look back over her and there's this 60 feet of brick wall. Oh my gosh. With nothing that, on it. That's the reverse? That's the reverse of that other shot. So I'm disqualifying this film. <laughs> and I look at it and I go, there is absolutely, like if- Oh uh, yeah, the van. Would just be that's vomiting funny. if he saw that because that is not a shot that he designed. That is not a, that is not a look. It makes no look. sense whatsoever. There's not even a handbill or a poster or a painting. It's just 60 feet of gray brick wall. I mean, uh, what, and so that's what, that's when, when he says, take the money and run, the, you, you have no control. That's the kind of thing they're talking about is like, you would have to be on, on set every day of shooting and for them to go, now we're going to shoot this way, or even in pre-production say, then when she's on the street and they're doing that number, we're going to reverse. Yeah, we're going to shoot this it around. Way. And he's but like, don't, oh. don't you think that that is just an effect of the system that they had with the art department back there of having so many movies turned out with the same designer or same? Very you, likely. Yeah. You couldn't Very be likely. On set. Or you had to, you had to surrender things because you had seven other films that were starting, you know, yeah. next week. And, and, you know, they probably, they spent a lot of money on this. It was, this was huge, hugely expensive to build all of these sets. And, and, um, you know, at some point you have to stop, but this just looks like a mistake. Yeah. It's like a, a, a mistake. Like the, like at the last minute they said, now we're going to shoot the shot of her. But I mean, this is this. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make sense. So this 5. is 5 this million. Is, they spent 5.5 yeah. million on this. Yeah. Well, and you can see where a lot of it was spent, but, um, it's not addressing it's it wasn't, a spent, big bill. Wasn't, wasn't spent on this reverse. <laughs> shot, that's for sure. <laughs> And so, you know, I, I was being picky, but, you know, that's, you no, know. I, I mean, I, I didn't watch it, but now that you said it, I, I just thought, oh, this is a different scene or something of her singing. And, it's, and it's a horrible, horrible wall. But I didn't know it was it, the reverse. With <laughs> everything that's going on in that Times Square, for them to choose that, set, yeah. the, set up the scene in such a way that that would be a, a, an angle, um, doesn't it doesn't make sense and that's that's why oliver hated i think why he hated the movies because he, yeah you he just you didn't have control mm. and they assigned you an art director so you were like a double you were like the the visiting person what? and you know the director wanted you there and that's probably the only person who wanted you there is the director. What I do notice in, in these um, night scenes in this space is like the one light, but the whole room is lit. And it's <laughs> <laughs> that would never fly now, but yeah. I, know, I mean, what else? Is there another picture? Or is it the next? Yeah, the wedding. I think oh, that's the wedding at the end, is a big double wedding. Um, which is huge crowds, wonderful, you know, it's, it's the, the, I have no problem with that. I just, um, it's just the, yeah. And Sky marries the mission, the mission lady and Nathan marries Adelaide. It's wonderful. <laughs> it all works out in the end. I, I have to say, I, I did watch this not three times all the way, two times all the way through. And then I watched the third time. I just watched scenes, but I, I warmed to it a little bit on the second viewing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I went into it, not wanting to like see all these things that I didn't like about it. And the second time I really enjoyed myself a lot more because mm -hmm. overall, like removing those image, those things that I sort of didn't like, it's really kind of wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, it's there's great numbers um costumes you know, look great all uh, for costumes me are like... fantastic and um you know all the musical numbers are fantastic you know the the big the big musical numbers it's just it's kind of great um uh so I, I can't but there's just a few things that i i just i just didn't like and i and i think there are cinematographer choices not having the lights on on the backdrop when yeah. he was in, um shooting a blank brick wall and that's it i mean 
There's some feet. pretty big offenses in this movie, though. Not, not, good scenes. <laughs> just, just completely stand out. Um, and then just shooting the backdrop at a really odd, unflattering angle doesn't really make sense. And I just, I kind of think all those cars, to me, all those real, real, real cars just take away from the fantasy world. Because they're not fancy cars. Those cars aren't fantasy. They're painted nice colors, but it, it, this is a very, it's a very, a very fantasy world kind of. Yeah. Thing. And there's no cars written into the script, by the way. So to have them, it's it's a it's a Broadway show. Like right. You know, there's you no. You just cars. assume they're cars. You don't need to see the cars, but I mean, but I, they're, I, they built Times Square, so you kind of have to have cars. Yeah. If it's real, but it's not real. It's just hard. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a very stylized. They didn't pick a line and go with it. They they I, danced all over the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. Just, yeah. So. <sighs> all right. Well, here's the well, well. Let's take it down a notch and go to "Love Is a Many Splendor Thing." <laughs> Lyle, <laughs> production designer Lyle Wheeler and George Davis, set decorator Walter M. Scott and Jack Stubbs. Uh, a widowed Chinese English doctor falls in love with a married American correspondent in Hong Kong during China's communist uh, revolution. Um, not a fan of this movie. Let's just say this. Oh. I don't know. I just, I don't know. But I like some of these sets a lot. Um, uh, one of the notes I read is, is in one of the most classic examples of camera point and view editing, the hilltop love scenes were cut between Hong Kong in one direction and a hill at Fox Movie Ranch in Malibu. Um, wow. and the same ranch was used for both the film and television series MASH. So that's, I'll show you the hilltop, but the, oh. the one view is the Hong Kong. And then when they're up, like sitting on the grass, it's, it's Malibu. So um they they did a lot of exterior shots which i thought was great and sh because i really love seeing these period films and when they do show the period of real cities right it, it's yeah. like it's so fascinating and, and the cars and what people are wearing and the signage and i mean hung, it's so dense here. it's dense it's wonderfully dense yeah and it's that is realism there you know realism what, yeah. Um, there's fantastic scenes where it's real, they're on the water, and then they're not. Obviously, they've got this backdrop and the lighting is perfect now, and they're, you know, they're having their intimate conversation. Um cute little restaurants, and then the backdrops I feel aren't cheesy in this movie. Like they're it's weird because I know like this top this top photo i know this is a set but the backdrop people are moving around like it's almost like a film back there well like it could have been a real projection yeah yeah they're projecting like they, like they did the um the driving scenes right uh, and they do that they do it in, in a little in to catch a thief too so um like do you th that's either a backdrop or it's a real projection because there's probably lights rippling on the water Yes. Yeah. That's moving too. So I, I appreciate their use of that in this film. I didn't find it cheesy or anything. I, it, it, I mean, it took me out because I'm looking for it, but it's using the volume. Yeah. It's like yeah. LED, big LED screens, but it's, it's oh. just better. Uh, we, we do it with better quality now, but it, it, there's really no difference uh, between having a rear projection screen outside the window uh, so you have you know things moving in the backdrop and having you know a, an led ball yeah. yeah this um it's so it's 1949 hong kong is what they're portraying um she is a doctor and again just a plethora of research in these like the the sheets hanging from above the the furnace in the middle of the room the same weirdo sink in the middle of the room um and but simple it's total simple she's in like a clinic and this little girl comes in and she winds up adopting her it's really adorable 
um, her, she basically lives at the clinic. This is her little room. And she is actually a wealthy, comes from a wealthy family, but, you know, is a doctor in, in a, at this clinic. So she's taken it down a notch. I thought all of these details were great. Um, his apartment is, you know, clean and mid-century and, but even that, well, I guess it's not mid-century because this is 49. Huh. Yeah, but it has that, that sort of 40s modern uh, yeah. kind of, that lamp is fantastic. Yeah. And um, there's, I don't think I got a bigger, well, I don't remember if I got a wider shot. The bottom is like the, um, the rich people who donate to the hospital, they have like parties, like donation parties. Um, but then in this other doctor's, <laughs> in his room, he's got all these fish tanks, which they shoot through, which was great. Um, wow. Yeah, I think they're in that room twice. Uh, at her family's house, I believe, they have this beautiful glass. Look at that glass uh, backlit bar. Backlit bar, love it. I mean, somebody should steal that idea. <laughs> it's like rippled glass or something. Um, they got a great airplane. Look at this airplane. She's then they they go swimming and they they uh swim over to her friend's house. Her friend's house is right off of the the uh the water, and they got a great setup there. The friend's house is fantastic, but this is actually her family. This goes back to her family's house just the screens and the tile floor and the immense detail to get she's Chinese, I believe, or yeah, she's Chinese. And, but, and, but she, the clinic is in Hong Kong. Um, I just, you know, the putting in these different cultural things, uh, I thought were fantastic. These like panels on the door again, like shooting through those, uh, panels in the wall there's some oh. really interesting sets i would say i was more into these sets than the, than story. the story yeah yeah they're in love and he's he goes away because it's wartime and but he goes to meet her family and this is like her family's house and he has to get a divorce he's still married he has to get a divorce to be with her this is the friend's house that has the the, the outside uh, that I showed you, this beautiful pan on the back and then that lit soffit up top, I thought was fantastic. Um, it's like Hollywood meets Hong Kong. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, the lamps are great. It's fun. It's a, it's, they're good looking sets. This restaurant's gigantic restaurant that they did for like one scene. One scene, yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, this the so I don't so at the end she's at her friend's house or I don't know whose house this was actually I forget but she's in this bedroom at the end like writing a letter it was very sweet but even like see how the the uh, window in the back where that lamp is which I think they use that lamp like four times in this movie but... with the, <laughs> the 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 leaves pushed up against the translucent glass yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's mm. a little odd. What's out the other window? The bad other one is a backing. Bad, bad backing. Yeah, backing the ocean water. is so high. <laughs> it's, oh no. Yeah, but mm, there you go. I, it was fine. I mean, I understand it was a maybe a different type of decor for the for viewers to look at and to vote on, but. I don't know. I wasn't really into the story and the sets were the only thing that really kept me watching it. So, oh, nicely designed. It hopped around a lot. There's a looks, it looks like there's a lot of sets. Um, yeah. Was, I mean, they went back and forth to a bunch of these, but yes, but probably this last one, they didn't go back to very much, but yeah, I mean, for the time, I I don't know. I don't know why this was nominated because I want to talk about what wasn't nominated after we're done. <laughs> oh, excellent. Great. Yeah. Well, just so for a minute, but it's a, a kind of mind blowing. So Picnic, our oh, winner, yeah. <laughs> production designer, William Flannery and set decorators, 
Joe Melsner and Robert Priestley. So, so here's a correction on that. And is that wrong? I apologize. Joe Melziner is the production designer. William mm -hmm. Flannery was the art director. Because Melziner was the production designer of the Broadway play, and he was brought out to do this to to be the to do the film. The um the director um uh was Josh Logan. Yeah, Josh Logan. Oh wow. Brought him out, said, I'm doing the movie. And he had done a bunch of he'd done a lot of Broadway plays, Josh Logan, a lot of movies. And he brought him out to do that. But why don't you do your little um your what do you call it? Your summary? Oh, just, just the summary of what this yeah. is about. It's yeah, um, what it emotions are ignited among the complacent town folk when a handsome drifter arrives in a small can Kansas community on the morning of the Labor Day picnic. I mean the poster alone is tantalizing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's um it's very <laughs> uh it's very sexy and raw and um and sort of it was it was part of this whole naturalism feel like like um they speak in very naturalistic ways and they that the staging is you know it's all the look the scenes everything and it but it, it is raw like energy and and um and sex so he's this old he actually he's not older he kind of older he's supposed to be a college kid so <laughs> Holden was 37 and then he just got out of, he went to college with a buddy of, and this buddy whose dad owns the grain, is like a big grain industry person here. And he, but he's like uh, down on his luck. He's kind of a drifter. And he goes and hooks up with his friend, um, uh, Cliff Robertson. Um, and he wants to, to get a job, you know, with, with his, in his company, his dad's company. And um, he doesn't have a cent, you know, he's just, mm. he's broke. But he's super sexy and he goes and he does odd jobs for this lady. And he's this lady lives next door to Kim Novak, you know, and her and her little sister. And um, and he starts working in this lady's backyard and he takes his shirt off. Mm. So now he's all sweaty and he doesn't have his shirt on. And then he comes over and he starts talking to the little girl and talking to Kim Novak. And um, uh, she realizes that he knows the guy he knows andy i think his name is um is her boyfriend she's Ooh. dating this guy. she's dating the son of the richest guy in town and you know they're they're not poor but they're not rich you know they the mom's making her a dress so it's, the top is the guy's it's the rich guy's house that's the rich guy's house and that's him running to see you know hey you know um i forget his name hal hey Hal, what are you doing here you know <laughs> And um, they're just hitting golf golf balls out in the front yard as one does. Oh yeah. Really? Um, and then in the bottom picture, that's mom making a dress for the um, the Labor Day picnic, and um, they're hoping that um, she gets um, chosen as queen of Niwala, mm. which is, Niwala is Halloween backwards. Oh. Ever. Um, and so mom makes her this dress and if she gets chosen the queen then um, she comes on Halloween there's another big thing and she's the queen of Halloween or Niwala um, there's her little sister so they go to the picnic and, um, Alan or Aunt Andy or whatever his name is Alan I think um, goes with Kim and then Hal uh, goes with the little sister the Scorts little sister to the picnic mm. This is just like during the day they um they go uh they, they go swimming um and he gets to show off his diving prowess and and all the guys there are jealous of him huge huge so many background people yeah it's, it's fantastic so they they um they shot it's a county it county fair <laughs> yeah well they shot they shot most of this movie in in or like in little towns around Wichita and like five different towns they went to to get different aspects to like you know i guess where the houses were and where the train is the train yards and where the grain yard they go to the top of a grain elevator and you, so they were sh shooting all where wherever this picnic was which is a wonderful um yeah. park with a river down it and a bridge over the the, the park and um then there's 
Um, I think go. I have like the watermelon. I have this. Yeah. That's he goes funny. to help out, and he's always got his sleeves rolled up or the shirt off or something. Um, they give him a suit coat to wear for a minute, and he takes it off because it's his. He goes, oh, my my chest is, my shoulders are just too big. It doesn't fit in this. <laughs> and the ladies are like, well, you can take it off. That's fine. <laughs> um, And go to the next. What else do you have? This, this is the picture you liked. It, it looks like, like a Monet painting. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a Monet painting. I mean, every, I, when I saw this, I, I then searched for so long to find a higher resolution. So it, this is the best I could do, but. Even look at the background where it has that little waterfall back there, like uh -huh. and the guy sitting on the sides. And this is like picture of American life. It's just so beautiful. It really, I mean, and it, it again, so many background. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. And, so and the people just, they populated this whole park deep mm -hmm. into the background and they, the atmosphere, it's just wonderful. And the, the color very kind of controlled Midwestern color palette, nothing too loud or garish, right? It's all- Yeah, I mean, even in that house, where's that house? It's all, I mean, there's pattern and everything, but it's all monotone. Look at the curtains are the same as the wall, wallpaper and yeah, a lot going on, but it's subtle. But I, I saw this and I thought, oh man, I gotta watch yeah. this. Look at the cake. I <laughs> so so just a little so Milzine or did the did the the Broadway show mm -hmm. and had done a ton of Broadway shows he did um he did the Broadway show of this picnic he did Guys and Dolls the Broadway show he did South Pacific King and I and Can Can um he was he was look at that picture of the bridge that's just amazing wow, that's he was the busiest, like when this, when he went to, um, to uh, to L.A. to do this, he had nine shows running on Broadway, which was amazing. Um, he didn't want to go out. Um, Josh Logan said, "You got to come out. I need you." And um, I, and he goes, "You you just be there three weeks, and you'll make thirteen thousand five hundred dollars, which is you know a lot, you know, in those days." Um, and so he met the, the production designer, the, the local art director and the local art director is like, what are you going to do? Like, I'm the art director. What are you going to do? And he goes, I'm just going to, I'm going to learn from you guys. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about credits or anything. I just want to learn how you do movies and, and, and whatever. And then he goes, so where's my drawing table? They're like, uh, no, you, you can't have a drawing table. You can't do drawing. We have, we have a whole team art department can do drawings. He goes, well, that's how I communicate. I do drawings. And so then the union sent out a rep to like say, what are you doing here? You have to join the union. He goes, look, I'm going to be here three weeks and I'm going to go back to New York and you'll never see me again. So he he they said, OK, and they set him up an office away from the art department. And he, he drew and they go, you can only show your sketches to the director. Nobody else can see your sketches. Oh, my God. What is this so weird? Because they didn't want, you know, non-union people working in the union. They, and and by the way, the, the New York union was just as weird. Yeah. It was just as strict. So um, the producer, you know, intervened. They gave him a drawing table. He did drawings for a few weeks. Probably, you know, a lot. They All the interiors were shot um, in, um, um, I think, at, at Paramount. It was a Columbia Pictures. I don't know where they were. I don't. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, they, you don't know. Warner Brothers. Warner Bro Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. and so um, uh, then he in the last few days they went to Kansas and he was with them scouting all locations, and then he went back to New York and he wasn't involved in mm -hmm. um any of the, you know the rest of it was just done by by the um uh. William Flannery, who is their art director and the set decorator. I have uh, I have a book of Joe's work. It's one of the first books I ever got about production design. 
and it's in my office and I don't have it. You know what I mean? Like it's packed up with my office. So I couldn't look at it when I saw that he was doing yeah, it. Yeah, I, I I looked at that's where this information is. They oh. they go into oh. the, um, they talk a little bit about the play when he did the play. It was a very simple set. It was just the two houses. They don't go to, you know, they don't, this, this goes all over. The movie really moves around, you know, um, and this picnic out in this big park is just fantastic. And she comes down in the boat, the queen, it comes down in the boat and everybody cheers. She comes under the bridge. It's really kind of wonderful. And then everything spirals out of control. <laughs> everything goes. This looks bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a so drunken night that's the next that's the next morning you know he's cleaning all the slime off of his boots because he you know he he ends up going with alan's date with uh, kim novak and they they go off together um the little girl gets drunk oh. and they blame they blame hal but it really wasn't hal's problem it was this guy brought the booze and the little when they weren't looking the little girl drank you know and got sick and they blamed they blamed um william holden and um so he gets pissed and he leaves and kim novak goes with him he goes you you don't want to come with me and she goes yes i do and so they they get together they're they're somewhere by the train tracks and the river and you know because of the codes you couldn't show them making love but the whole idea is they're in there you know, this was the night that her boyfriend wanted. It was like finally the night. It was, you know, the third date. It went up. Right, it's right. like, I want to find out if you're the one I want to be with. And anyway, she goes, she's with William Holden. They just hug. And I think you have this picture where they're just in an embrace. This picture, yeah. they don't move, <laughs> but the train comes chug, 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 chugging by with the, and then the horn blasts. And, oh. you know, it's just symbolism of. Yeah. They're now making love, but it all they does. do, they can't, they can't get any closer than that. And, and then the the train passes and then you cut to the next, you know, morning or it's whatever. He, he, though, he takes her back home and he's like, oh, it's, there's, you know, how are you going to get back in the house without them seeing you? Da, da, da. She and she sneaks in and, and she talks to her sister is like, I'm so sorry. I really can't believe I said what I said. They, you know, she, she hates her older sister for being pretty mm. and always says she's pretty it's and, funny because i don't know who this actress is but in some of the pictures of the younger sister i kept thinking it was carrie fisher yeah no it's um famous uh strasberg um susan strasberg oh oh wow so um yeah, so he they the, it's like a bad bad uh, situation, um, and he leaves town. He gets he goes back to Alan. He returns his car, and Alan is really upset that he ripped he stole his girlfriend. And Alan tries to punch him, but you know William Holden is bigger yeah. and stronger, and it's a lot and older. Sends him off anyway. They they've already called the cops on him, and he ends up punching the cops and taking off and mm -hmm. um uh he's got to get out of town and um he was only in town for like a less than a week huh yeah i mean on the weekend, the he, weekend. he shows up on the morning of the picnic he shows yeah. up in the morning he gets a job he befriends his family goes to a picnic he gets a little loving at night and then he leaves that's that's he a gets chased out he hops the train out <laughs> out of town or he, and then and then she decides that she loves him and she's gonna go she hops a bus to find him that really is the thing with older movies people fall in love very quickly instantly <laughs> <laughs> instantly so so you know one of the i was gonna um i didn't follow through with this but i i made like three words to describe each of these each of these um shows and this one um uh was realistic and sexy and sad mm. it was it was just kind of sad you know um but also it's that 
this has the the weird she's 19 he's 37 yeah there's a lot of older men with he's young supposed girls to be playing like 26 or 25 yeah. something yeah. he's been bumming around since college so he's in his mid-20s but he's 37 <laughs> it doesn't seem to bother audiences i guess not not if you're a big star you no. know they want they want um you know uh it's like uh bogart and bacall yeah she was 19 he was 50 oh here's that, here's that. I love this scene. i love that that is so you don't realize the guys are there talking about girls and the girls over there talking about guys and and they don't realize that they're on either side of this wall and they can hear each other and he finally says hey you better uh you better get out of there or you're gonna get some educating <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like that. At first, you know, funny enough, funny, I I found a uh, shot and it was just the girl side. And then I found a, I found this and I was like, oh, that is fun. Oh, that it makes just, sense. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, now I get great, it. Great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the things that this this production designer, Joe Ziner, did when he was in Hollywood just for two and a half weeks is he met with the, the cinematographer and um, and he actually knew him from decades earlier when the guy was a still photographer, mm. but he, and so they connected and they talked about Joe Milziner would light all of his own productions. Mm. Uh, and so he was very, his, he was very consciously aware of color, color and light, the emotional impact that lighting has. So they had long conversations about color and 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 lighting and and skin tone you know color and everything you know they they really talked about color palette a lot um and then he and then milziner left but this is beautifully shot there are so many amazing setups especially in the scenes at the park and between william hole and kim novak just lit beautifully yeah. beautifully lit um and uh yeah, so I, I, um, yeah, and then they, they were in this scene for like thirty seconds, when he go, goes back and he returns his car. Yeah, and, and um, uh, it looks like a different. I mean, I know this is blown out because I wanted to like get the whole thing here, but it's right. like, it looks like a different movie. Yeah, it's the rich guy's dad's den. Yeah, and so he goes back, and the cops are already there, and then Cliff Robertson takes a swing at him. And then, um, and then he tries to leave, and they Cliff Robertson takes another swing at him, and ends up on the ground. And then the cops come in. He's like, "I ain't go." They're like, "We'll we'll just take you. Can sit. You can sit in the jail. You got nowhere else to go." And um, he punches the cops out and leaves. And so now he's really in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, naughty. Got to got to get out of town before you. you get yeah. Jail, buddy. That's Drifter One Hundred One. <laughs> so yeah very very naturalistic um in in the acting style and in the you know in the yeah the, the decor i thought the house uh, looked great like just looks great it's yeah simple not overdone mid, like that midwestern kind of spare mm -hmm. you know modest uh modest color you know controlled color palette Obviously, the the thing to stand out here is the dress, and so everything is kind of, you know, down from that. Yeah. Yeah, it's this it's palette versus like they have the pattern of the sofa or the subtlety of the wallpaper, and then, but then even those curtains are subtle but have pattern. Like, are they the so? Is it the sofa fabric? It might be. Oh, maybe. Well, yeah. Maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. Up top, I think you're right. Yeah. I mean, on the legs too, but I can see it on top. Yeah. Um, and then you know, look at the gra graffiti there, like yeah. old, you know, scratched, and then the public. Uh, uh, I guess this is after they're swimming before they go to the picnic. It's like their changing room. The changing room, yeah. Public changing. Oh man, that is. It's a lot of people. And this, this one the um oscar yeah this is our winner 
Come which on. is really interesting that it's it's kind of very naturalistic and real and it there's no i mean the picnic is a real showpiece but it's really all about you know there's some string lights and and right. just the way it's the, the people are everywhere i mean they didn't he didn't win for the watermelon contest or you know the there's a band that's playing there's a dance scene it's very uh sort of minimal there are like across the river they're dancing and that's that's where all the bad stuff happens they're they're sort of dancing in um away from the the picnic and and the school teacher Rosalind Russell gets she's the one sitting on the couch in this um bottom picture yeah. and she's the um old maid school teacher and she gets she gets drunk and wants to um dance sexy with William Holden and she tears his shirt off mm, girl and she's she's drunk and then the little girl gets sick and then Rosalind Russell's angry at William Holden and says he did it he did it you know she just, she's awful she's off that's what makes it sad is she's she's just incredibly sad in this movie and, and they don't have a dad uh the dad left the mom you know oh, with two girls, yes. and she had to raise her two two girls and you know everybody's just the mom really wants Kim Novak to go with the rich guy, go with Cliff Robertson, get married. You'll be the wife of the richest people in town. You know, your life will be set. Right. Don't don't go off with this drifter with no money who is a braggart and he, he gets in fights and he's going to, you know, not be nice to you. So yeah. it's a uh, slice of American life. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little, it's a little sad. I mean, but it's, it, um, and I think it's odd that it won. Oh, do I have to, have to talk about this now too? This is the last one, right? But it is, I, I considering, I don't know. I kind of think it's odd that it's won too, but I don't, let's talk about, you know. Yeah. So this, this the, I watched this first. Knows. <laughs> I watched this first because I also had this. Because mm. um, I had a little Alfred Hitchcock um, DVD collection um, box set and this was in it. And I've, um, I've had this poster for years. I just love this movie and I've seen it several times, but I, I probably watched it three times um, when we when I started this and I watched it first and I went, you know what? I can't watch each of these movies three times. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, no. But, but I really got into this. Um, and, um, and this is the same art, the same decorator as Rose Tattoo, by the way. Arthur Cramps was on this. I noticed that it's it's crazy how and these are you know these aren't done next door to each other you know uh not. this was done at paramount well but some of it was done a lot, most the, of it was done in south france they were they went france, to the south yeah. france and shot a lot and, yeah do you want to do your intro on this yeah so the production designer hal perina and joseph mcmillan Johnson, set decorator Samuel L. Comer, and Arthur Crams. It's a Hitchcock classic, but a, a retired jewel thief sets out to prove his innocence after being suspected of returning to his former occupation. Yeah. Um, I love this movie. Just oh. fantastic. <clears throat> um, just, I mean, I like it because of all the rooftops, you know, just th that whole, you know, that's a all very sound stagey thing and it was, it was all built but the south of france they 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 went there they scouted all these locations they got all these fantastic brilliant locations that however looks like it's a a, a rear it's like a combo project. like yeah yeah the top he's there but the top there is there's there you know on the riviera there monaco and and um all those driving scenes are just fantastic yeah um, with the great scene of him in the bus with the with hitch mm -hmm. he just hands over he doesn't really look at him he just looks sort of past him yeah <laughs> or his and uh that's yeah the reveal on that but just um this was shot this was their vista vision so super widescreen yeah and the color um love this this picture on the rooftop with roby looking down over the the ball sort of at the end of the ball um and then on the the right you see you're looking over the shoulders to the camera guys right and seeing the setup so this was all done 
um, at back at the studio in the Paramount, this whole ball scene. Um, cause I've seen another picture of this, which is looking up at them. And basically the soundstage walls are just right behind them. Oh, wow. They're right up against the soundstage walls. So this was probably took up a whole soundstage to do this ball scene because there's big backdrop and greens and, you know, the whole entrance through the, 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 the villa, um, costume yeah. really wonderful i i just it, it it was fantastic so this movie is just so luscious and elegant you know and it's got suspense the sets you know when you're in the the hotel rooms they're they're pretty straightforward you know they're in that sort of hollywood gray <laughs> and then they're wonderfully appointed decorated it's all very tasteful and upscale um and his house, I think he had a picture of his house. Yeah, in the very beginning. Right. Well, this looks like a hotel room too. No, that's that's in a hotel room, yeah. I think. Yeah, or an office. Um, but he lives in this villa, and it's the whole inter interior is all like white stucco, with this staircase. Um, you see all those rooms? They're just kind of that Hollywood gray. <laughs> you know yeah. and then and then bring in the drapes and the decor and and but it's all very elegant and um and you know you're supposed to be looking at there's a good great shot of his his villa the interior of his villa very little screen time they do sit he does sit out on the balcony on his terrace and he has a meal with the um insurance agent who he kind of befriends mm -hmm. uh but i just love this this set um I think they're at either at the insurance agent's um office or at the police department there because again think, they're all the same they're all the same tone it all all the same tone i think this this lower guy that's the the police um inspector um yeah this interestingly is they had to dub all of his a lot of the the french actors they had a lot of because they 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 this guy couldn't speak a word of english Oh, wow. He couldn't even read it off a cue card phonetically. It was so bad. Oh, no. uh, yeah, it was kind of <laughs> kind of odd. Um, I just uh, oh, so this this art director also did Rear Window. Hmm. Cinematographer also did Rear Window. So they did. This was a group of people that had worked together mm -hmm. with Hitchcock, and so they kind of knew Hitch's way and i think they went on to do like vertigo and other things um uh but i um i just thought it was just super elegant suspenseful um and just sexy and i i love their their diet their conversation their dialogue so this is another one of those um moments you know where there's a scene where they're sitting on that couch and um they're, they're making out they're kissing but the fireworks are going off in the background. Yeah. And of course, thing. that's that's the stand-in for sex because yeah. they can show it and they they didn't even want to let them do that. Um, the 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 code people, they didn't want to let them have that scene. And Hitchcock just picked a piece of music that wasn't like music that you, it was just a little bit more like comedic or or mm. playful or orchestral but it wasn't like sex music it was like fun music so they kind of put a comic edge on it and they sold it to the to those um what do you call the the, the um the, the, the board, ratings the ratings people they let them get away with that um but i do love you know hitchcock started out as an art director and i'm sure he dictated this rooftop you know these rooftop scenes where he would climb on these rooftops and there's all the shadow play and um and hiding behind chimneys and and um and it's just really uh it's just fantastic i think this that go back one shot that i think was shot in the south of france they said there was one kind of interior hotel scene that was shot in the south of france but otherwise it was all just Mm. Exteriors like the upper picture, um, you know, was shot in the south of France, and you know, all of all these, um, 
Mm. There's a big parade scene. There's the funeral scene. Um, the driving scenes were done with with um, background people, and then when you cut to them in close up, it was a, you know that rear projection, yeah, uh, projection look. Um, this was done in L.A. in in at Paramount. Um, the he goes. He goes to the restaurant, which is where his old um, um, pay, uh, guys from the underground, uh, and they were also thieves back then. Um, they all work at a uh, at a restaurant now, and he goes back to say, "Hey, um, just want you to know, I promised you I wasn't going to go back to cat burglary, and it's not me who's doing it." And they don't believe him; they think yeah. he's they think he's the cat burglar. So he it's it's funny because it is so cat and mouse like he he has to change instead of being the mouse he has to become the cat to try to find out who's doing it yeah, yeah. To, to clear his name yeah clear his name and it's uh and he gets the insurance guy involved to say you tell me who the people are with the wealth with the most jewelry the most expensive jewelry and give me a list of what all that jewelry is and where they're staying. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not the thief. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's in her hotel. Yeah, I didn't do it, but I'm glad you told me it's all there. <laughs> um, oh, there's that scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like how so, it's, the you see it from this angle and you go, how did they shoot that totally romantic, sexy yeah, with the, they're alone on the cut. Staring down her throat. He's so in love like with her. A dozen guys just looking right at you. Well, at, at, nowadays it's three times as many people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and look, see, look at that. They have the uh, on the right. You can see that they've lifted up the sofa because the feet don't hit the. Because it's, it's too low. <laughs> yeah, it's too low. Yeah, it's it happens. We got to lift it up. We got to put it on some apple higher. boxes. And it's so tight because look, there's only there's like a little corner of a set behind them. All the rest of the set is pulled away. Yeah. The room, it's just a little bit of a set. So great! I love behind the scenes stuff. I love this movie because I think too because of the lighting. The lighting is so effective in in the emotion of like her falling in love with him and the suspense of it and the green. Yeah. And like you said, like the fireworks and yeah. But yeah, his set's most interesting. Like, what is that? That's crazy. It's, a, it's a, just this great villa. Um, I saw a picture. They they picked this villa. It was a great little story that I I think it was on the on the DVD. Um, they picked this amazing villa they all loved. And then they brought Hitch. When Hitch showed up, they said, Oh, we want to bring you to this villa. We love it. And they get there. And it's completely fogged in. You can't see anything. And Hitch is like, nope, not going to do it. And they're like, well, listen, listen, the fog is going to lift. We can go back when the fog lifts. And and so they, they go on. They look at the other alternatives. And Hitch picks one that he likes. And they go, oh, the fog is lifted at the other place. Let's go back. And he goes, nope. We're... <laughs> and so they had to, they picked their second choice exterior. But it, um, they, they said that the, um, the production designer said it was actually a better it ended up being a better location for them and um but i just loved the set and it was not on camera for very long it was very elaborate you know it's stuck on plastic like, interior yeah like i mean the wall textures and everything is so intriguing but look at the shadow it has up on that top wall because of the lighting yeah like, there's supposed to be windows on the fourth wall uh-huh and uh, high windows yeah. And yeah, I I just and I love that the sunken living room where you walk and you step down and those steps are all it really feels like it's a house from the south of France. Look at that. They, yeah. the, everything is is concrete plastered, you know. It's just wonderful. Yeah. I I really love this movie. This was it was elegant, it was suspenseful, it was titillating, the conversation, just the just the the tease between Roby. And and um, Grace Kelly, it, you know, there was just that romance was just fantastic. I like this movie the best. The mo as as far as production design, I think so. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was half locations, and and so they're they're fa fabulous. 
it's half locations, but I'm 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 going to say that I I I take that too because they they chose all those locations. Um, I just I really liked it. I mean, I I liked it more than Picnic, and I liked it more than Guys and Dolls. I mean, Guys and Dolls was a huge design undertaking. Yeah. This I think just works better. Well, I just like it. I just like it. I it's, like it. Very, it's sometimes it's very hard when you compare musicals to just straight films because they have the advantage of being a little bit more whimsical sometimes, or you know, you get away with things. I would have to say, either this or Daddy Long Legs for me, design wise, is a better winner. But I didn't see Picnic, so it's kind of hard to say. But Daddy Long Legs was pretty brilliant in its fantastical design and it looked amazing the pictures that you had i i have to watch that now it certainly looked uh i like the it look it's looked more than the look of guys and dolls yes from the so, pictures i saw i would say yeah. that it definitely wins over guys and dolls yeah the thing with to catch a thief is is that it's such a classic movie and you've seen it, I mean, I've seen it so many times that maybe that's why I think it's a better design film because it works for me. It, it works, yeah. Um, I don't know, I, but let me just tell you this. What wasn't nominated? Uh-oh. Rebel Without a Cause, Oklahoma, The Virgin Queen, Summertime, Seven Year Itch. I mean, those are films that came out that year that I thought- Unbelievable. Wow. Those, uh, that's some heavy competition there that wasn't nominated. Oklahoma wasn't nominated? Yeah. Is and that, that was in the same year as, as Guys and Dolls? And, wow. Yeah. Rebel Without a Cause, too. Rebel Without a Cause. I mean, East of Eden came out that year. Wait, Rebel Without a Cause and East of Eden were in the same year? Yeah. Wow. Um, Queen Bee, I don't know. Queen Bee is um, Joan Crawford, right? I don't know that movie. Black and White, that's a really good movie. That's mm. a really good movie. Yeah. Oklahoma, I mean, because for cinematography, for color, it was To Catch a Thief, Guys and Dolls, Love is a Many Splendor Thing, A Man Called Peter, I don't know that one, and Oklahoma. And then for Black and White, the winner was Rose Tattoo, Blackboard Jungle, I'll Cry Tomorrow, Marty, and Queen Bee. So, I mean, there were some... Queen Bee, wait, Queen Bee. Queen Bee, yeah. The, uh, oh, those, those were the nominees for Best, Best Picture? No, that was for cinematography for Black. Oh, Man. cinematography. Oh. Um, best picture was Marty, which won. Love is a Many Splendor Thing, Mr. Roberts, which I don't know, Picnic and the Rose Tattoo. Interesting. So that was a big year. Went a lot. I mean, I love Seven Year Itch, I guess, you know, design wise, but I don't know. <laughs> well, this was fantastic. This oh, was a lot of fun to do. I'm gonna um I'm gonna watch um the movies on your on your list, the ones that I didn't didn't see. Yeah. Uh, I really want to see Daddy Long Legs. Um yeah. I'm and I've never seen it. Marty. I've never I've always oh, wanted yeah. Marty. Do Marty. Do, it's so quick. Yeah. It's seriously like maybe 90 minutes. It's really quick and it's such a sweet film. But yeah. I loved I loved watching them all because I just feel like I'm I'm just getting a plethora of research and I just love watching all the films. And I I definitely feel like I want to watch Picnic, especially since you said it was sad. Like there's some emotion there. Like it's just a, not some corny Picnic movie. And I'm glad it wasn't a musical. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's great. And Kim Novak is 
is 19. She just looks amazing. She just got, and you know, she's this, the prettiest girl in town yeah. and she's not happy, you know, with the guy that she's with, who's like the, the, you know, the, the local, you know, hotshot yeah. rich yeah. kid. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. It is, it is a really good movie. I just, it's interesting that it won for color production design. It's, I guess, it's very naturalistic and and subtle, and it it achieved its goals really, really without calling attention to itself. Mm. It's just like you just felt like you were all the all the the sort of the locations and the the locales. You really felt like you were there, and that it wasn't manipulate. You weren't being manipulated. It wasn't. Artif there was no artifice it didn't feel artifice artificial at all do you think they could um like uh, of mine i mean uh, they could almost make rose tattoo i'll cry tomorrow marty they could make those today and and enhance them i feel like i don't know but black and white is hard to do if they're going to do it in color and still invoke the, that emotion but i mean they could redo daddy long legs and splendor thing and no one would touch catch a thief but <laughs> like... no you can't redo that now here's the deal i heard that they um